Okay, so now we're going to go through the 10 steps one at a time with pictures so that um, you can get a feel for what I've been explaining to you. In this demonstration, I've canned grapes because they're um, water bath and that's the first step you would be taking as a beginner. Okay, so the first step, you're going to work quickly, filling one hot jar at a time. My fruit was cold. I did not have to heat it up. And so I had the grapes washed sitting next to me. I'm pulling out a jar from the hot water, and you can see my canning rack there with the lids and um, rings on it. So you always want to keep moving. You don't want to waste a lot of time while you're doing this. This is showing where I'm topping it off with syrup. And you can use several different kinds of syrup in your um, processing with your fruits. There is usually a medium um, syrup, a light syrup, so, and it doesn't matter, whatever you want to use. If you're watching the sugar in your diet, then you don't want to use the really heavy, heavy syrups. So I'm just topping this so it covers the food. And then you want to allow for expansion. Your recipe is going to tell you. You can have a quarter inch space, you need a half inch space, you need an inch space. Especially if you're using raw foods, they're going to expand. If you overfill and you think you can get just one more piece of food in there, what's going to happen is your jar isn't going to seal. It's not going to suck down on that jar, the metal lid, and you're going to end up putting it in the refrigerator instead of your pantry. So um, if it happens, and it does, just use it up quickly. Um, you don't have to throw it out if it, it just didn't seal. Um, use it the next day. Stick a knife or a spatula inside your jar and go around the outside to release any air bubbles. That will allow for more space for you to fill or, or more syrup to top off your food. If you don't have um, a syrup or broth or whatever on the top of your food, it'll dry out and it won't look as good. It's still edible, but it it's just dries out the food. Okay, so and this is showing where I'm wiping down the lid with a clean cloth, making sure I get that really great seal on it. Okay. Also, at that time, before you do that wiping, you're going to want to add your salt, your spices, and everything. You don't want to clean it and then add it because you could um, uh, get stuff on the rim again. Okay, so got my tongs. I'm taking them, the lid out of the hot water. Notice that I'm putting the lid on the jar with the tongs and trying not to use my hands. If you do need to position it a little bit, it's okay, but don't touch that undersurface. That's when you're going to get mold and, and contamination in your food. Uh, let's see. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing with the band. We're going to move that um, out of the hot water, and we're going to hand tighten it down. It doesn't have to be really super tight, otherwise you won't be able to get it off later, but just make sure it holds that lid on there. All right, and then everything's filled. You put all your jars in the hot water at one time. You're going to, it's hard to see by this picture, but I have two inches of water over those jars, so it's, they're completely submerged in water. And then... When it starts boiling, you can see how the water's bubbling up. That's when you start your timing. The water can't stop boiling or you start over again. Okay, won't hurt the food. I mean, it might get a little softer if you have to, but um, make sure you keep it boiling that whole time. Okay, there's the finished product. Um, I have removed, you just take the kettle off immediately when your timer goes off, take it off the burner, set it aside and pull your jars out and put them on a clean dish towel again out of the draft, okay? This is, a, this is the hardest part of canning right here is ignoring your jars, letting them do their own thing. They're going to seal on their own, but don't put cold water on top of them. Don't push on the button. Don't blow on the jar. You just ignore them. And then you go about your business and you start hearing the little ping, ping, ping as the, the lid goes down. And that is just really satisfying. I thought I was the only one that, that had that, but everybody I talk to that's done canning, they, that's what you live for is that little ping. So you count it out, you make sure it's sealed. And then when it's cool, um, I do this too. I remove the bands. You don't want to store your food with the bands. So remove those immediately. And then I'll tip it upside down. And that's when I see if I can, I've got my leakers. If it's a really thick food, I might just flip it over and leave it for a while. It's on the dishcloth. If it leaks, it's not going to hurt anything, but you'll know your food is safe. So, um, and also the cool thing about these metal lids, you can write the date and the food right on the top. Okay, so you don't have to mess with labels unless you want to invest in some fancy labels that say made by you and, and give them out as Christmas presents. So, um, 
you can do that too. Okay, storing your canned goods. Gone through all this work, and you've got, you grew your vegetables, they're beautiful, they're organic, and you, you want to make sure you take care of your food at the very end. All right, so no bans. Um, and, and part of the reason for that is so you can check for spoilage. I suggest you go in there once in a while. Um, I would avoid stacking the jars, because if something is up here, and you've got another jar underneath it, and say it's spoiling and oozing out, then you've contaminated two jars. If you have the room, try not to stack them. Um, you want to rotate. Um, I've got limited space, so I have a shelf that literally slides out, and I can see the dates on the jars, and that way I'm able to rotate my food. You only can what you can use within one year. Now, I know some of you that I talked to over the last couple of days have canned like 300 quarts of tomatoes. And um, I don't know, maybe you have a big family, but we could never use that much in my family. So um, if you give it to your neighbors or whatever, but that way you always have a good food supply. It's always fresh, it's always nutritious, and your, your family has that food security. Um, we talked about checking, and you want it in a cool, dark place. You guys are so lucky that you have basements. We don't have basements in Arizona. I wish we did. I have to fight for a spot to put my cooled food. I have to hide food around the house because we just don't have a basement. So um, if you've got that, that would be the best place to store your food. Cool, dark, and um, quiet. Okay. I had to put this picture up. Um, my sister-in-law lives in Union, Missouri. And this was her first canning experience last year with applesauce. And you can see she's got cinnamon and she's got regular applesauce. And what I love about it is she brought all the grandkids in and she taught them how to do it. And it was a family project. Um, it was her teaching them to preserve food. And I, I just thought this was a great success story. So um, that's what... That's what Kathy ended up doing with all the kids. So um, you can do it. Just be brave and jump in. Okay, these are some of my books. I um, have a little hobby farm in Arizona. Um, we are, I guess, migrating to a traditional farm in Wisconsin for the summer. Um, so that'll be very different for me to learn how to grow foods up in the, the north part of the United States. But um, I have two books on on our antics at the, the farm in Arizona. And my goal is always to get beginners started. So um, these books are, are directed for people that are just trying to get started into gardening. I also dabble in historical fiction, so that's what the other book is about. Mm. Oops, I went the wrong way, folks. There we go. Okay, now I have written a canning guide just for you guys. It's on my website. If you go to josephinedefalco.com, there's a tab on there called Get Growing. And you can go on there, print that out. Um, if you don't want to write this all down now, you can come out and pick up one of my cards and it's got all the contact information on it. But um, it's like a, literally a checklist and it's very, very easy to follow step by step. These are the things you need to do. Be, be prepared to start canning. And um, so it's printable and um, I wanted you guys to have that available. Um, my table's right outside this door. I'm going to have the drawing today for the kettle. If you want to take that home with you and get started, and I have consolation prizes. So um, if you want to stop by. And this is all my personal information. So um, I'm an author, a speaker, a registered dietitian, a retired nurse, an EMT. I'm completely immersed in the healthcare field. So if you have any questions related to health and nutrition, let me know. Come by and visit. I have a, um, my website, my private email. If you want to write to me, you don't um, want to respond online. And then I have a Facebook um, called Best Little Organic Farm, and that's where I write about the antics on the farm. So um, if you uh, want to make some comments or keep up with what we're doing, then you can find me there. <laughs>